Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter one talking about the basic concepts and moving into the next topic of this chapter that is 1.5 Common Failures in Performance Testing and Their Causes. To begin with, of course, we are talking about the common performance efficiency failures here and what exactly could be their possible causes. It's just to give you an idea that uh, when it comes to performance testing, what are those things which we need to actually target upon? And uh, we need to do understand that what areas, what common failures we can expect. So be prepared for that in terms of including that as a part of your planning, including that as a part of your scenario and being observant because performance testing is all about having a great monitoring skills and observing any kind of deviations during the scenario execution. Because if in case you get any kind of deviation, you need to halt there or hold that execution for a time being and try to see that what exactly could be the possible reason and report the concerned authorities and concerned team at the right point of time. And instead of executing, you know, what I mean to say is that instead of executing a 10 hour scenario with the initial failure of certain things, there's no point wasting the next nine and a half hours of your time. And you can just hold on there. But this will only happen if you have the understanding of the common failures and you have planned according to that. And that's what we are trying to discuss as a part of this particular tutorial and understanding them in more detail. Uh, of course, there are certainly there are many different performance failure modes which you can actually expect when you start working with the dynamic executions of the performance test. Uh, there are following examples which we'll be talking about as common failures, including the system crashes along with typical causes. The number one which are getting started with is the slow response under all load levels. Now, response time is something which is really important when it comes to the performance testing. And we need to just make sure that at any point of time, no matter whatever the given scenarios are, and you are executing them, you try to be as responsive as possible so that your user feel really happy. And moreover, it could be one of your SLA, it could be your one of agreements and that requirement which you need to fulfill. So in some cases, response is unacceptable regardless of the load. This may be caused by underlying performance issues, including but not limited to bad database design or implementation, which is like database design here means from the indexing point of view that whenever I make a query on the front end, send a request to that, and database takes a lot of time to structure the data or look forward to the data and then return back to the customer. Also, if you talk about the network latency and other background loads, which are from the different other applications and the services running behind the screen, which might be, might be unnecessary at that point of time. Such issues can be identified during functional and usability testing as well, not just performance testing, because usability is all about user friendliness and response time can be measured there. And uh, you know, even talking about the functional, basic functional testing can also tell you that, okay, no matter I was doing unit testing, but a single program was unable to respond on certain point of time. Even if you talk about just a unique API test and you run that, you do get a response time for that. So they're everywhere, it is possible. So test analyst should keep an eye open for them and report them. The second one here is low response under moderate to heavy load level. So we were just talking about a very basic load right now. Now going into the heavy loads when we expect the response time to hike. In some cases, response degrades uh, unacceptably with moderate to heavy load, even when such loads are entirely within normal, expected, allowed ranges. Underlying defects include saturation of one or more resources and varying background loads. Now here, there is a slight difference that when it comes to basic load, uh, the common reasons behind that could be your database architecture because there are not much of the people working, but still response time is less. So there's something wrong with the architecture and other things. But when it comes to heavy load, of course, we do expect that it could be in any of the situation. And the main reason could be, of course, the higher number of concurrent users or the background loads which are applied by the other services which are running. So we just have to uh, 
uh, overcome them by defining them appropriately and the number of services allowed should be determined as whitelisting and then you can definitely overcome such challenges. Further to continue, we have another uh, issue which we have as a failure mode that is degraded response over time. That's from the endurance point of view. In some cases, response degrades gradually, not suddenly, like gradually take certain interval of time or continuous period of time to come to a particular uh, degraded response uh, to be given to the user. For example, in the beginning of the day around nine o'clock, I find my system working quite very fast, but as people continue working till afternoon, we start looking forward to some of the delayed responses by the afternoon and probably your system just starts, stops responding by the evening around five to six. So we're just talking about uh, you know the gradual decrease in the response time or not in terms of like uh, performance. Uh, response time actually increases, performance decreases. So underlying causes include memory leak, which is one of the common reasons for that because uh, the memory which is being utilized for certain activities has not been released yet. So the available memory is not enough to you know work upon the new things. Disk fragmentation, uh, which is a very common thing, even if you're talking about your system performance, increasing network load over time, like maybe the people have grown up uh, throughout that interval of time. Since beginning, there were less people, and as you move ahead, you got more people working on that. Uh, growth of the file repository, sometimes the data also adds a lot of value. Uh, in, in fact, sometimes the negative impact and the unexpected database growth to search them. Of course, it takes a little bit of time. Another one thing here is inadequate or graceless error handling under heavy or over limit load. That means stress testing when we talk about them. In some cases, response time is acceptable, but error handling degrades at high and beyond limit load levels. Underlying defects include insufficient resource pools, undersized queues and stacks, and two rapid timeout settings. So all these are common probable reason due to which this failure mode can happen. And we just not be ignorant about anything you know, other which we have just discussed about being a performance tester, it takes you to be aware of as many failure mode as available and create a taxonomy out of it. And when you plan for your upcoming performance test, you do consider or keep them into count and plan your test accordingly. Finally, to add, here are some typical examples of general types of failures uh, listed. And these are just beyond the one which we just discussed in the details. But of course, as a part of performance test, we do include them as well. So web-based application that provides information about a company service does not respond to user request within seven seconds, like being a rule of thumb. And the performance efficiency of the system cannot be achieved under specific load conditions. So these are just typical examples from different industries to give you an idea that what could be the possible ways by which you can identify a failure mode and uh, what you should look forward to when you're running a test. Another one, a system crashes or is unable to respond to user inputs when subjected to a sudden large number of user requests, which is like spike, you know, creating a spike on the number of users the capacity of the system to handle this number of users is inadequate. System response is significantly degraded when users submit requests for a large amount of data. That means uploading a huge file, probably like bits and pieces, but put together is more than a gig. And uh, one gig of data can take a lot of time and probably sometime reduce your performance as well. Um, the capacity of the system to handle uh, the generated data volume is insufficient. Uh, next, the batch processing is unable to complete before online processing is needed. The execution time of the batch process is insufficient for the time period allowed. A real-time system runs out of RAM when parallel processes generate large demands for dynamic memory, which cannot be released in time. That means there might be a timeout defined log you know, to release the memory, but uh, maybe you are running different queries to quickly and uh, you do not have enough time provided to the previous program or previous function to release that memory from the RAM as an location. So you just have to figure out things that are we talking about some of these kind of things where the actions are performed 
faster than the reallocation of the memory and releasing of the memory. So we need to be adequately planning things or designing the system in such a way that uh, the system is much faster than the user interaction. So it does release and make the system available for the next user to perform the next activity. A real-time systems or uh, component A which supplies inputs to real-time component B is unable to calculate updates at the required rate. The overall system fails to respond in time and may fail altogether as well. Code modules in component A must be evaluated and modified, which is also called as performance profiling, to ensure that the required update rates can be achieved. Now, this is from the point of like when you deal with uh, certain integrations with your application, you have done some of the activities in point A or component A, and then you move to component B. And uh, you see that you know the component B is taking a little longer to show up just because component A has not finished processing yet. So it, it could be taken as an example of uh, you know selecting the city, country, and state or province when you drop down the drop-down list and select a country first, then go to state, select the state, and then go to the city. So all these drop-down lights, uh, lists are integrated to each other. Similarly, it goes with the application to application. Like you are on an e-commerce website, you have done some shopping in the cart, and then you move to the payment gateway, and payment gateway takes a lot of time to load the amount which you are supposed to be charged. So we just, just try to make sure that these kind of failures are quite common and we try to make sure that they do not exist in reality when we work and target them to uh, be resolved before you push the product to the market. Okay, so that's all from this particular tutorial team. With that, we also come to the end of the chapter one. We'll be looking forward to the next tutorial of the sample questions from this chapter. So. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.